Also, I should say I'm a little bit sick right now, which has the advantage of deeper voice, but the disadvantage of sniffles. So apologies in advance for that. Um, it also will make it harder to do a 15-minute talk in five minutes, but we're going to give it our best shot anyways. So a uh, very quick outline of this. We're going to do problem, background inference, uh, sort of some background, more background work, and then like the things that I did that make this better, which we're going to cover extremely quickly, and the actual results of it. So let's start with the problem. Um, the early ML research basically was all just like trying to see if we could get stuff to work. So you have data, you like put into a model, and you like post your results in the benchmarks. Nowadays, the stuff works though, and so now we like have to put the stuff into production. So we have to figure that part out. Um, so here's the extremely abridged introduction to how like ChatGPT inference actually works. Uh, the first thing that you do is you run the model in parallel on the whole prompt, and this generates something called the KV cache. Um, this can all be done, as I said, like totally in parallel. Um, and then the second part is that you actually generate the output of like what the model wants to say. But this has to be done in serial. Um, so like I generate a token, I feed it back into the model, I do this over and over and over again. Uh, the problem with it is that when I'm running only a single query at once, like on your laptop, as opposed to in some big data center when I can do a lot of things at the same time, when I'm running, running only a single thing at once, I'm totally bottlenecked by just like moving memory around. So basically the number of like serial steps I can take per second is just limited. I could do a lot more stuff in parallel if I wanted to, but I just don't have the additional queries to do that with. Um, there's some like, accompanying factors, we'll ignore them. So, how do we turn like annoying sequential stuff into parallel stuff, right? Like this is my example, you know, I have thing one that I have to do and then depending on that I might have to do A, B, C, or D and it turns out that C is the right one. How do I turn this parallel? I guess, I'm just like, I think this is what's going to happen and I run my guesses at the same time and if I'm right, I get free stuff. And if I'm wrong, then I have to throw it away and that's sort of annoying but hopefully it doesn't cost me too much. So let's apply this in this domain. So this is how speculative decoding works. Um, I'm going to guess the next few tokens to try to get free stuff uh, using a faster draft model that predicts what the big model is going to do. And I uh, decode first. I like, take all of these tokens and I feed them into the big model all at once. I run the big model on all of them to just like check the work and then I take as many tokens as I can that are correct. And in this way, out of a single batch, I can hopefully get more than one token at once, which uh, lowers my latencies and gets everything to run faster. And so this actually does work. This is some prior work from Google and DeepMind and whatnot. So I made this better. How do I make this better? The first thing is that the way that this is traditionally done is you use a, um, like basically a linear sequential batch. So in other words, if like my prompt is that's the cutest, the small model will guess like dog in the whole world and you know, it does this whole long sequence. So the problem is that it's exponentially unlikely that I'm gonna make it all the way to the end down here, right? The odds that I get like 16 tokens in a row correct is just very low. So what I would like to do instead is to restructure the whole thing as a tree of the possible options. And there's two benefits to this. The first is that I get more expected tokens for every batch that I run. Um, the second thing is that it's actually also cheaper to generate this batch because I can also generate this batch now in parallel by running only the number of batches equal to the depth of the tree rather than the number of nodes. So I can, it's like both a better structure and you can do it more quickly. It's a little harder to implement, but it's not too bad. Um, the second thing is that then when you actually start to do some profiling of what this looks like, sorry, this is a very annoying thing to read very quickly, but this is actually copy pasted from the, the profiles. Basically what you see is that most of your cost now becomes generating this batch, that building the batch is expensive. So I wish I could do that faster. How should I do that faster? I should just do speculative decoding on the small model as well. So this leads to stage speculative decoding where I have a hierarchy of models of different complexities and I use, I sort of propagate up the, uh, the whole sequence. Um, and so, when I do this, like the thing works basically and you can generate your, your stuff a lot faster. So the red line is my stuff, the black line at the bottom is like the baseline, the blue line is the, inter like, the naive spec of decoding that doesn't have my uh, improvements to it. And so the reason that I like really care about this work is that in general open source AI tends to be run in the small batch form. So when you make this run faster, you change the economics of open source versus data center or closed source AI. So like this is fun for me because now open source AI is like potentially three times cheaper than it was before using just the you know tricks, basically playing tricks on memory bandwidth. Um, it seems I actually have 47 seconds left, which is shocking because I was planning to be done right now. So I can also show you one other a uh, very quick thing as well. I don't know if I have other. Oh yeah, this is the fun one. So this is actually showing an example completion, not very high quality completion, but you can actually see where the different tokens come from. So what's essentially going on here is that the green token started at the like the very smallest, cheapest model, an Engram model, which only takes like 10 microseconds to run. Uh, the red stuff is the you know from the very biggest model. So you can see that most of the tokens that you get actually come from these smaller models and be just checked in big batches. It kind of represents a 
constant entropy per memory bandwidth is like sort of the right metric here, which is a weird metric, but that's sort of the right, the right thing that's describing what's going on. Um, so it's very fun that you can just see in action, like these are the tokens that actually get generated from different things. And that gives me five seconds left, so um, I've done. Great. <laughs> And yeah, questions, <laughs> which there's probably a lot from that. <laughs> so I don't know too much about like branch predictors, but it seems sort of intellectually similar to branch predictors, except instead of predicting branches in code, you're predicting branches in like the sentence. Um, is there any inspiration or any sort of connection between the two? Yes. Um, so this is exactly the same concept. I mean, I think it's these are all variants of the more general concept that like you can always turn sequential stuff into parallel stuff by guessing. These are both instantiations of that. But it's it, like that was my inspiration for this. I'm actually very annoyed that Google and DeepMind uh, scooped me on the original spec of decoding because like I came up with that independently because I was like this is like branch prediction, right? So it's exact, exactly the right intuition. Um, I think in the future probably models will not work this way. I view this more as a band-aid rather than like the right fundamental way. In the same way that CISC computing is now being largely replaced by RISC computing, like I think it's the same kind of thing. Okay, we probably have time for one more very quick one. Uh, up, up there? Oh, yeah. Uh, awesome stuff. Is there a way that you can apply this to get higher accuracy by exploring trees more fully? Yes. So you actually get a free beam search when you do this. I don't explore that because I'm just like, for this purpose, I was this paper, I'm just like, I'm going to replicate the distribution exactly rather than trying to make it better. But you actually do get a free beam search when you do this. It's the same thing as a beam search. So you can actually sample from the joint distribution a little bit better than you would get with like a regular autoregressive model. So you get free accuracy points as well, which is kind of nice. Oh, super cool. Thanks. Okay, cool. Thanks.